Well, I have Miss Marlene <laughs> with me today. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I'm so grateful that you came over. Uh, I'm so grateful that you agreed to have an interview with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we can just begin of you telling us a little bit about who you are, where you're coming from, a little bit of your background, and how you ended up here in Peru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my name is Malene, and I was born south of Germany. And um, I love it there, and I always go there as well to see friends and family and to bring the medicine that I learned here to there. Um, but uh, what called me to Peru was to come home, kind of, to come to this feeling of home inside of me. And um, I started remembering that here because when I was in Germany, I wasn't happy. I was in a corporate job. I was like depressed. I didn't know who I am, what my talents are, like, what inspires me, like, what, what is the spark of life? Everyone seemed the same to me, like, I, I saw gray, and something inside of me was like, there's more to it, because I was traveling a lot before, so I've seen and expanded my, my consciousness before through traveling, but then I was like, I wanna go to Peru, I wanna go to the jungle, and experience life in a, in a different way, and, um, then I was called to the valley to, uh, I don't know why, it's just like this feeling of this calling you, you follow, to learn. I mean, I came here to learn, to learn about me, to learn about others, to learn about relationships, to learn about shamanism, to learn about plants, to learn about to just be, <laughs> to learn like what are my passions, you know, like why I left as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. found so many things here, and that's why I yeah. keep coming back, because mm -hmm. I feel home here. Okay, mm. and can you talk a little bit about your experience with the plant medicines? Mm. What you've done, how many years it's been, mm. um, what kind of plant medicines, and maybe touch a little bit on the shamans that you worked with. Mm. Um, my first, like, serious plant medicine ceremony was in 2019. I went to the jungle up in Iquitos and to a shaman called Don Agustin, and he serves with his wife, Donia Malene. So I instantly, like, felt very connected, and I heard really good things about him. He's very old and experienced, and, yeah, this time there really changed my life like I got this beautiful insights and like as I said like I was traveling a lot before suddenly I discovered this whole world <laughs> and universes inside of me and I was like wow there's so much space and um seeing through the trauma that I'm telling myself that I want to hold on to has helped me to let go of it and to come to an even wider space inside of me that can hold more love for myself and for others. So, and it's for sure a journey with ayahuasca and I also, um, like in the sense of um, there's times I work on my own topics, but then there is times I just can fly and be creative to learn new things about whatever topic I want to ask questions. But then there's also these times where it's like asked to do really go deep into prayer for humanity, for healing for like people that are suffering or like to also look at the darker sides to bring light there in prayer so this uh, it's a journey of like and every time is different and this is what inspires me so much about plant medicine as well as the plants they are my friends and they always want the best for me so that I can grow and another very deep love is San Pedro has like just this massive heart expansion and remembrance of like being in the body, being here, 
that the earth is my friend this is also my home and like my body and um, yeah many many deep beautiful lessons it allows me really to get out of the mind and just like be in the body and expand in it and to to come into uh, harmony with all that there is like topics that annoy me worries like yeah things that just distract me and they come back to presence and it's really nice mm -hmm. I also love the mushrooms the kids but the wise ones you know like and doing the little networking between plants and just like always wanting to empower me as well they they help me a lot in inner child work to like to hug that the little Marlene that is there and just wants to live and wants to be and wants to explore and it's like has the spirit and it allows me to connect to that and go beyond uh, and helps me to to learn to play yeah and here's a question uh, what is your relationship with God like were you raised religious were you raised with um, this is a type of God that I worship or did that kind of come later on in life and when you introduced psychedelics into your life how has your understanding of God evolved mm, mm, very good questions because I got raised in a little village in Germany and uh, it's very Christian and I was like uh, doing the service in church you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so, every Sunday I like it, every Sunday <laughs> already I had more days in the week so <laughs> um, I think it allowed me to develop a connection with a bigger force uh, a mystery that is there that people uh, take um, strength out of and from and and can uh, release their um, worries or whatever is on their mind and I think that was a beautiful introduction into uh, the concept of God whereas now I don't believe in the concept of church but the concept of God is still very vivid inside of me and God is not the one it's, it's me, it's you, it's a life and everything and I think that's really beautiful if you combine it or see from a shamanic perspective as shamans believe everything has a soul a rock a table um, I don't know like a hammock you know everything has a soul and in this way everything is God and um, the God that I worship is love you know and to uh, the presence to the connection connection is for me God as well connection with the earth connection with the person that I speak you know mm -hmm. like or how how I treat things and this is all God in, in its form you know and all the bad things are God too yeah. you know it's God is everywhere and mm -hmm. this is my relationship too and I'm with the plant medicine like how it's evolved is like seeing more of that seeing more of what is divine inside of me and acknowledging that the power that lives within me like a, waking up more and more shedding the skins and the layers of um, what holds me back from seeing my truth my essence my medicine and the more I do that the more I tap automatically into prayer and I see the power in it how it really helps mm -hmm. and I'm so convinced and knowing that and believing in that is that is God mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> And what is your current prayer in life? Mm, good question. <laughs> <laughs> My current prayer is um, that we humans come back to this deep connection with our own hearts and living from there so that we can live in harmony with all that there is and especially my prayers as well that we step back and see that first earth spirit animals and then human so that we are humbling ourselves and not wanting more 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 of all you know just to be confident and uh, or content mm -hmm. within the moment and trusting into this connection, mm -hmm. rising from there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so.
prayer right now at least. Yeah, I <laughs> love that. Thank you. What is your favorite memory to think back on? My favorite memory to? Think back on. To, to think remember. back on. My favorite, ooh. <laughs> That's a wild question because favorite memory to think back on I mean I can I, there's every day is happening so many beautiful things <laughs> so I'm like every day I have great memories and I'm creating like a resource a, a, a source of strength for me like from whatever moment later no mm -hmm. but so a very current one was like I went to a, a very high mountain here in Peru called Al Sungate and it was full moon and I was, there's a lagoon and we were camping up there and I was just like sitting on a rock and I looked left and the full moon came up. I looked right, I was on Gate right there and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> like how, like how did spirit call me here? Like I don't even know and I was like inside so deeply touched and exploding from happiness at the same time so this is a a, a current memory yeah. yeah that's a great memory also memory when we went to my birthday mm -hmm. up to Pitu Sirai having mm -hmm. San Pedro all together and just sharing beautiful soul moments together mm -hmm. can't ask for more you know? <laughs> hi <laughs> um what are you most proud of mm. <laughs> what am I most proud of Mm. Whew. that's uh, also a, a good question because uh, there's there's a lot of layers to it now and the more I think in it like on what's the core of it and I'm, I'm proud of myself yeah I'm very proud of myself I'm proud of my friends I'm proud of my family I'm proud of the connections that we're all having and I'm proud of of every day that that I can remember of um, how how to live and walk in integrity and in authenticity. Like mm -hmm. yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Thank you. How do you define love? How do I define love? <laughs> ah! That's such a beautiful question because my friend Catalina, one of my my heart's person in this world, she's writing a book about love. Mm. <laughs> so how do I define love? It's just it's a very deep feeling. Love is a feeling. Love is a presence. Love is the sensation that arises within. It's a feeling. A feeling of home, of arriving, of excitement, of... Yeah, it's a gut feeling. It's a, it's a hard question, really. It's <laughs> love. It's a big question. You can think about it. Yeah. Or are you done answering? Uh, maybe I come back again because it's working in me now. Like okay. these questions are yeah. working in me. So yeah. I'm like, okay, how do I go deeper in it? Mm -hmm. now? Like, so now maybe you can tell me about your first love. My first love. Uh huh. My first love. Like my first relationship. No, you can you can make it whatever you want out uh. of this question. So it could be in fourth grade when you felt like you loved this boy so much, yeah. or it could be your first real relationship, whatever you mm. define as like your first love. Yeah. Yeah, my first love, his name was called Franz. <laughs> and it's very funny because my granddad's name, which I never met because he died before I was born, his name was also Franz. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, he, we were together three years, I was 13, very young, and it was just like this innocent exploration, and um, it was beautiful, innocent, you know, <laughs> not knowing, learning, growing with each other, and, and like tapping into uh, what it means to be with someone, to feel like the, the butterflies, and 
going through through highs and lows and yeah it's very beautiful it's, it's a sweet. beautiful memory huh? yeah. yeah three years long <laughs> i was young <laughs> what happened between you two like that we uh, separated mm -hmm. it's just a different path i guess mm -hmm. just uh we're I young. we were young as well i had um i went through hard times with my family and i think that was a lot as well for him to hold because we were young you know and also then just like having different directions mm -hmm. i mean i i think i always was a bit different i had something inside of me this this, this spirit of exploration and you know like going away and um but in a in a very traditional village there's a, there's a certain box and i wanted to look out at the box so yeah. different <laughs> path <laughs> respect <laughs> okay now what is something that you thought was really important when you were younger, but now as you got older, you realize it's not that important? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, because sometimes I'm like looking back and think about what do I say sharing there? Like my, just my attitude is like, I thought I know it all, you know? <laughs> and now I'm like, oh God, was I stupid. <laughs> and in a couple of years I would, say the same thing you know and this is beautiful like <laughs> but one thing in specific well at the beginning of this plant medicine path to make it not too like far away it was like everyone needs that you know I was like everyone needs plant medicine it's gonna <laughs> save the world I was like <laughs> I get I think many people went through that phase and then I I think a little bit I went into this like um, how do you call it, like on this mission, to missionize, you know? <laughs> but no, mm -hmm. so that's not important anymore. It's like really following the heart. If you really have the call, then it's meant to be and trusting mm -hmm. that when things are meant to be, that they will arise. Mm -hmm. And instead of um, trying to convince everyone, it's just mm -hmm. like really embody it and live it and maybe be an inspiration through that, you mm -hmm. know? And that's enough. I don't have to mm -hmm. go on a mission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and baptize everyone. <laughs> <laughs> With ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah. So if someone approached you because you have experience with medicine and they have never drank medicine before, they have never done any psychedelic, um, what would be advice that you would give them mm. before they start? Mm. Yeah, I like to say that um, a journey with plant medicine is a journey and it's not only the ceremony it's like a serious preparation and uh, getting to the core of like what is calling me here and if it's just understanding it's a call <laughs> and if it's just understanding that it's a call and trusting that okay but then it's the medicine the journey itself and the integration so it's not booking a, a retreat and thinking this will change my life and I come back home and keep doing the same thing. So it's really creating the space and um, yeah, coming with a humble heart of understanding you're tapping into a big wisdom that can absolutely change your life for the better um, if you allow it and take it serious. So this is one advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. And to, to to trust the calling, to like, oh, and one other nice advice is to don't spill your first cup too early, kind of sentence, which means is like when you had your, your medicine, and then you, f you finish the ceremony, it's like, let it sit for a while, like, integrate it, it's a treasure, it's a little diamond, it wants to, uh, wants to feel like what is what is now changing within oneself and if it go out and just tell everyone da 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 this happened and they're like no like th let's say they not in this frequency not saying they're in a bad frequency but maybe not understanding this your opening in a very vulnerable way and opinions can come in very hard so my advice is to don't spill your first cup too early. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.
What is the most beautiful thing about life? Life. Life itself. Death. <laughs> Death is very beautiful too. Yeah. That's the thing, no? If we... Or if I don't embrace death, I don't embrace life. Mm. And um, the most beautiful thing is, it's just the connections for me, like being connected with the moment, with the earth that I see around, the ability to feel, smell, see, and um, to share, share with other people like being in community that's very dear to me and music mm -hmm. meow <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh there you go what do you think is the biggest challenge facing society today mm. hmm it'd be nice to not know everything better for the other person if I say that right, like yeah, mind your own business. Essentially. Mind your own business, <laughs> in the way of yeah, like have a whole, a loving, open heart and holding space, but don't tell the other one to do what mm -hmm. to do, you know. And um, and in this way, like mind more your own business and um, come with this open heart to the other. So. We are more with ourselves instead of looking outside and blaming this, 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 this. But it's like, because when I blame, I show three things to myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I can kind of bring it back to me and then meet the other more, like, connected with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Who is one person you think about daily? Who? <laughs> That's Catalina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what about her? Do you, do, do you think about? It's just, I I don't know. There's no words. She's, she's just amazing. Person. She's just so oh. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And she's been so long on my path. Like we met more than like, like eleven years ago. Mm -hmm. And she's just such a big inspiration. I just love her. <laughs> it's not much to say, you know. It's just mm -hmm. it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, are you able to call her? I'm able to call her. Like right now? Should we call her? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, let's call I love her that. and you can tell her that... I don't know. What a great idea! <laughs> Let me see. I hope she answers because she's always busy. Uh, it's nine, uh, nine, uh, 7 in Germany, so that's good. What should I tell her? Um, you can just tell her that you're doing an interview and the question was, who do I think about the most, or daily? And it was you, and so we wanted to let you know that. <laughs> Let's see. Please answer. <laughs> sending, sending the. Yeah, telepathically. <laughs> I'm calling you. No, she's probably busy. What's what's today? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> No, she's not answering. <laughs> okay, no worries. Okay, Catalina, if you see that, you can send her um, like a voice memo <laughs> video Hello. thing. <laughs> Hello, my love. I am just sitting in an interview and I got asked a question who's the person I think daily of? And obviously, you came into my mind, and I love you so much. That's all I need to say right now. And sending you so much love. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> I love that we did that. That's awesome. We got to tell people more often, yeah. like, hey, I'm thinking about you. Like, that's it. Yeah. Just, I want you to know that I think about you and I love you so much, you know, just randomly. And it's so nice that you say that because it's something I, um, I love doing. Like, a person comes to, into my mind and I randomly message them just a flower yeah. or a song. Yeah. Like this is my, a part of my love language mm -hmm. to just randomly reach out. Yeah. And it's a beautiful way of like just staying in contact as well, yeah. like, wherever you are around this globe. Yeah. yeah. I love you. Yeah. I'm thinking about you. <laughs> I'm thinking about you. That's all. <laughs>
I think we got time for just a couple more. Mm -hmm. I don't like these to get too long, so. Yeah, of course. If you could go back in time and have a conversation with your younger self, what would you tell her? <laughs> <laughs> with everything that you know now. <laughs> oh. I would tell her, don't study your banking degree. Go to the jungle. <laughs> go, go journey. Go to the jungle right now. Mm -hmm. Don't think about career, about making business, about da 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 da. Just listen to that <laughs> now. And, and how old is Marlene? <laughs> In this uh, vision, who you are envisioning yourself mm -hmm. as? How old? She's after school. She just came out. It's like 21, 20. No, yeah, yeah. What's it? 19 ish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And what was that Merlady like? Oh, it was a wild one. <laughs> <laughs> she just was partying, you know? She's just like working really, really hard. She had three jobs at the same time so that she could finance her home, her car, like, um, yeah, she had to grow up very, very young and very early. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, Aww. she was just like wild. <laughs> I love it. If you had to talk for 15 minutes straight on a stage about anything, what would you choose to share with your audience? Oh. I would choose to share with my audience that life is a game. And even if it doesn't feel like that sometimes, it's like when you sit in, uh, in the prison in Monopoly, yeah? like, and you can't get your money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> There's a time you get out of it because there is change coming. And um, one way, a nice way is to come back to understand what is it that inspires you in life what is it that makes you smile it could be a funny cat video it could be an elephant sliding down a slide I don't know it could be um, looking at someone dancing or um, reading a book like something making music something that inspires you to feel at least this little moment of spark and find the light within the dark again and knowing that there is people praying for mm -hmm. and that you might need to even know them you mm -hmm. know but we pray we do that and when you face the dark you come out and that's a hundred percent sure in which way ever like you cared for you laughed and a lot of more things i would share in 15 minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> life is just a game life is just a game and it's here to be played right it's mm -hmm. just and to come back to also like understanding, okay, where are my figures placed right now? And where would they be better placed? And then, okay, like reflecting a little bit and then play. Yeah. Recreate the situations, these hard situations, and then play new in it when, yeah. and learn. And it's a discovery and come back to the inner child and play. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. And last question. Are you happy? Yes. I truly am happy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Can you elaborate a little bit more on like what that means for you? What that means for me? Hmm. It's living my life the way I want to live it. And I'm happy that I have my struggles because then I can move through and be even more happy after. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy that I can meet these beautiful people like I'm, ha I'm so happy that I can eat incredible healthy food every day I'm happy that people just randomly walk into my house and just say hi this is one of my most favorite things as well <laughs> it's like without no know like knowing that they come mm -hmm. I'm music makes me happy and dancing a lot I just love dancing mm -hmm. and um, I'm just I'm just happy Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for doing this with me. I love you so much.